Ugandan army have overthrown the government of the 46-year-old President Obote. The coup started at about 2 o'clock this morning and after hours of confusion, an un unidentified voice on the national radio announced that the army had taken control. Idi Amin's military coup was initially welcomed by Britain and other Western powers, who believed that President Obote had taken Uganda too close to the Soviet Union. The coup took place when we were on a flight from Singapore to Bombay. And the first announcement was on the BBC when we were in flight. The members of the Uganda Army and Air Force decided to take over from the civilian role because of the the last arrangement which were made by the Dr. Apollo Milton Obote to disarm the whole tribe of Uganda except his own tribe Langi and Acholi. And also that is the point which brought all this problem. will well and truly exercise the functions of the head of government of the Republic of Uganda. So help me God. I wish to take this opportunity to announce that although I have already stated that my government 
will allow full political activity by everybody in, in, Uganda, in Uganda. It will, however, be obvious to us all that the present security climate does not permit, I repeat again, does not permit proper political activity. I have therefore decided that all forms of political activities such, public, such as public discussion, meeting and rallies will not at the moment be permitted. They are therefore suspended with immediate effect. As soon the as soon as the security situation in the country warrant the resumption of this political activity. <laughs> Dr. Abote is still the lawful president of Uganda. Hasn't though the, the military coup there and the public rejoicing, which we've seen in Kampala, uh, meant that in effect he can't now be regarded as the lawful president of Uganda? Well, I, I, I really don't think there is such proof. Uh, the, the rejoicing in Kampala has not surprised us. I don't know who has been surprised about the rejoicing in Kampala. Kampala is in Buganda. Uh, President Obote uh, overthrew the Kabaka of Buganda. President Obote was, was trying to build the unity of Uganda by, by, by removing tribalism. And so the tribalists in Buganda will rejoice if President Obote is, is overthrown. So this did not surprise us. The army, I think everybody knows, including, including President Obote's enemies, the army is divided. This is known, that the army is divided in this matter. So why should we take it for granted that, that the people of Uganda will accept this change? What is the base of this change? We, I, I'm not su surprised that there was rejoicing in Kampala. But I don't know whether there is still that rejoicing now. There seem to be a lot of people rejoicing. The Buganda perhaps are the majority, are they not? Yes, but where, where is the other rejoicing? I mean, Uganda does not consist of, uh, of Kampala. There, there are stories that, uh, that uh, Amin has dissolved the local government bodies. Has, has he dissolved them because they, they are rejoicing? Or, or because they're not rejoicing. Why? And, and this, he has done this throughout the country. Why? Is this because they support him or because they don't support him? What, what is it? What does it mean? Well, would you like to see Dr. Obote back as president? Are you going to take any specific aims to get him back as president? Dr. Obote is the president of, of Uganda who happens for the time being to be in Tanzania. It's been said that Dr. Obote has given you 24 hours as an ultimatum to get out and let him come back. Would it be ever possible that he could come back and take over? Dr. Obote will come back to Uganda as a citizen of Uganda, but not as a president of the Republic of Uganda. My last question here is that I have noticed and a comment on Radio Tanzania last night that Dr. Apollo Milton Obote on his press statement in Tanzania yesterday evening on his arrival from Nairobi he made the statement that I was responsible for the death of the late Brigadier Okoya, the uh, 
2nd Infantry Brigade Commander who was shot dead with his wife in uh, at Gulu earlier in January last year. Therefore, I have seven prisoners who were actually arrested immediately when I was in Cairo and the tortured. They are here because I am clean. My, my heart is very clean. They will explain to you and you are free to question them if you wish. Although Dr. Rabati was accused also of uh, corruption and dictatorship, the mainspring of the army takeover was the threat to this outwardly peaceful country and to their own integrity posed by his special private bodyguard, the so-called protection unit. Housed primarily in a shabby villa near the cabinet office, it was taken over during the weekend fighting and evidence of communist complicity was revealed for the first time. Every day since then, Ugandan regulars have been breaking open the barred, curtained rooms to find crate after crate of brand new Russian weapons. Pistols by the box full wrapped in oiled paper for long transit and each with English instructions. Rifles and automatic weapons were stacked in innocent looking wardrobes. Mortar bombs and bazooka shells were hoarded ceiling high. None of this was apparently known to the general staff, not even the first aid material stamped in English with their manufacture and origin. Although it was known that the forces here have communist as well as western advisers, what apparently shocked the regular army was the dual role both the presidential clique and the Russians were apparently playing here. A British secret bodyguard wore plain clothes and were addressed in all public notices as students. This arsenal itself was even called the Nakasero Hostel. Even in the regular army headquarters, the palace of the deposed Buganda kings, three Russian armoured personnel carriers were discovered among the regular British-made scout cars and the army's cattle. They were marked with the exclusive registration UB for the Uganda cabinet, and no one knows how to drive them. They're thought to have been escape vehicles for Abote and his men if anything went wrong. No one wonders where to. The Special Protection Unit was, it's alleged, the instrument of unlawful arrest which had turned Uganda into a frightened state. Popular relief at the takeover was evident all along the roads to the capital. Thousands of people decked themselves and their vehicles out in harvest green to signify happiness. The soldiers were cheered wherever they went, despite some unnecessary excesses like the shooting of Europeans and the rough handling of pro abote prisoners who were herded into trucks and driven away to an unknown fate. But when the jubilation dies down, the regime has some very real problems, like the threat of reprisal voiced by General Amin. Despite its outward sophistication and glamour as a tourist area, Africa is still in parts of violent place, liable to claim many more victims, innocent as well as guilty, before it's politically sorted out. <laughs>